KT7 up here. This is my UR Lilith video. Lilith is a 70 cost light unit in the Sword Warrior group. Her new main job is Saber Knight, with Martialist and Paladin as sub jobs. Saber Knight is meant to stand up against both magic and slash attacks, it has some strong abilities. I have hardly seen Lilith anywhere in the past month. Most JP players skipped her in anticipation of a collaboration. My experience with her is limited, let explore what her kit has to offer. This time we will start off with shop and banner info. UR Lilith is available for purchase in a 6k pay pack that includes 200 unit shards. She also came with a 9 step guarantee banner, it costs 18k this to complete. You will get the unit on step 9, and 80 unit shards and mine spheres along the way. I like having options, this is great for anyone who decides to go for her. Next stats comparison. Lilith's HP is at 4441, tie with Ash and King. That is a lot of HP. Her agility is 56, and it can reach 75 if she has her agility support equipped. Her lock is at 198, which tie with Cypher, semi-evasion is definitely possible, and it can help her avoid crit hits. She also has access to move plus one, which is very useful to get her to the front line sooner. Overall, very impressive stats for a 70 cost unit. Next her new sword. The general ability is slash attack 15. The unique abilities to Lilith are AoE resistance 8, AP consumption down 15, and reaction block rate 30. I recommend the aim type for her. The Star Gleam Sword is also a very good choice for her, it also has 8 AoE resistance, plus it has 20 slash penetration in lieu of the AP consumption down. The Blood Sword plus 1 is another option for her, it can help her heal back with every attack. Now her TMR. It is a piece of heavy armor. The stats are really good. HP 542, crit of 9, defense 8, and 14 spirit. The ability is a self plus 1 ally buff. Grants the unit's 20 unit resistance for 4 turns, and lower target's magic man eater 20 on hit for 3 turns. This ability is good, but because it is an armor, it is more difficult to use. Continuing on to her resistances. She has 20 to slash, 10 to pierce and 10 to magic. Minus 15 to strike, and minus 5 to missile. All her positives are good. Negative 15 to strike is really bad, but we are not in strike meta, it is okay for now. Her ailment resistances are 50 to poison, 50 to frostbite, and 10 to immobilize. Very good against Gildamesh and Shereka, but not having any resistance to curse is a problem. Moving on to her master ability. She gets debuff weakening 15, and reaction block rate 30. Debuff weakening is very good. At level 140, she gets AoE resistance 15, accuracy 20, and upgrade to her job 25 attack to include CT up small for self. Next her main job support abilities. Support number 1 gives her attack 24%, slash penetration 40, debuff weakening 20, and a 4 times 50% magic damage reduction barrier at start of battle. This is a superb support ability, innate magic barrier and more debuff weakening. Support number 2 gives her slash resistance 12, and force barrier against magic based attacks from range 3 to 6. Both of these abilities are really good, number 1 has to be on at all times. Number 2 is what I would equip on her, but she does have a couple other really good ones from Martialist. Her main job reaction is a dispel counter attack against slash and magic type attacks. The range is only 2, and range height 1 and has a 70% chance to prop. Dispel counter is really strong, but the range is way too short. However, this might be the best reaction in her kit. Next her LB. It is a select 2 unit attack. The range is 5 with range height 2. Before damage, lower targets defense 38 for 3 turns. Then deals extra large damage. Post damage, lower targets spirit 40 and slash penetration 40, both for 3 turns. There are a lot of imperils from her LB, really sets up her teammates to deal more damage regardless of physical or magic. The slash penetration debuff is great as well. Next her buffs. The highest priority is a cross shaped group buff. Grants the group crit evasion 20 and slash resistance 25 for 4 turns. And 20 defense and spirit for herself, plus absorb 50% of the damage dealt for 4 turns. With the right setup, her slash resistance will be at 100 when this is active. Works really well with her slash penetration imperil LB. Be aware, she will multicast this before moving forward. 
Her second priority self buff grants her re-raise. When re-raise is active, she gets 30 defense penetration and lower AP consumption 30. Also grants her lower targets debuff weakening 30 to all her attacks prior to damage. On top of that, she also get a 4 turn on hit effect from this buff. Lower target slash attack 30 and re-raise remove seal, both for 3 turns. That's right, she can protect her re-raise, very nice. Now let's look at her attacks. The first on the list is a select 2 with range 4 and range height 1. Before damage, increase her unit resistance penetration by 30 for 3 turns, then deals large damage and lower target slash attack 40 for 3 turns. The second attack is a cross-shaped AoE with range up to 4, range height 1, and area height 1. Before damage remove re-raise, deals medium damage, and restore own AP if target is KO'd, up to 2 targets. The third attack is her low AP ability. A unit attack with range of 2, and range height 1. Deals small damage, and increase self CT small. CT up on finishing move is always good. Lastly, her job 25 attack. Another select 2 with range 4 and range height of 1. Deals large damage, damage modifier increases if the targets are closer to her. Post damage, lower targets attack 30%, magic 30% and healing power 50 for 3 turns. And then grants her CT up small. The Saber Knight job is all about debuffing. She can lower enemies damage output and keep her team alive. Moving on to her main job sub. The first ability is a unit attack with range 3 and range height 1. Deals 2 hit medium damage, and lower targets light resistance 30 for 3 turns post damage. The imperil comes after damage is not ideal, but it can possibly set up her teammates. The second sub ability is a diamond shaped AoE attack around self with area height 1. Deals medium damage, and has a 25% chance to inflict confusion. These abilities are not bad, but I like her other sub job better. Now let's go over her Martialist sub. She gets Martialist lore, giving her attack 24% and defense penetration 40. Battlefield mobility gives her move plus 1 and agility up 12%. These two support abilities enable her to do a lot of different things. She can be more offensive with Martialist lore or be more speedy with Battlefield mobility. The reaction ability is Fluidity, a physical reflex at 15% proc chance. The two notable abilities are Relentless Stance, which gives her courage, and 3-step Star Strike, which is a 3-hit strike attacks. The abilities from Martialist isn't that useful in terms of what she wants to do. Next Paladin. The support ability is Mind-Body Unity, and the reaction is Paladin's Guard. Both are not useful at all. The interesting thing from Paladin is Taunting Blade. She can function as a tank once she is in range to attack. With her Imperils, and her resistances against Slash and Magic, she can attract attention and survive quite a bit. Paladin is the sub-job I would recommend if you want to put her in the semi-tank role. If not I would stick to her main sub. Okay, that's all for her kit, moving over to her VC. Her VC is dropping the same day as the unit. It is a hollow card that supports Sword Warrior, Great Sword, Bow, and Ninja Blade. A rare sighting of Ninja Blade VC. The stats are HP 324, Attack 152, Dex 25, and 3 Agility. The party abilities are Slash Attack 42, Magic Wide Guard 16, and Slash Resistance 20. The bestowed effects are Attack 10% and AoE Resistance 10. Hollow Party ability is for dual content, gives the group reaction block rate 24. VC Mastery also for dual content are Accuracy 2 and Damage Cap up 500. This VC is pretty good. Magic Y Guard is useful against units such as Gildamesh, Crimson Wizard, and New Sada Lee, whom all don't care about AoE resistance. Of course, there is still physical AoE attacks to worry about. But the bestowed effect gives the user 10 AoE res, which can help out a bit. This card works with Cloud, Cypher, and Uarfina. It is very easy to just plug this in over Dark Bahamu. However, this is not a VC that I recommend at the moment, just wait until you pick it up randomly. Moving on to her equipments, Espers, and Trust Stone. For Lilith, I recommend the Stargleam Sword that was released along with New Lucio. It has 8 AoE resistance just like her new sword, and 20 slash penetration to increase her damage. The Blood Sword plus 1 is also a great option, she can heal back even more with each attack. 
In the second slot, the Army Plate or the Maximilian Armor are both great. If she is your keen blade user, give her agility with Pod 153 or the Hermes Sandals. In the TMR slot, as always, give her agility. All the physical-based espers are fine for her. Regular Odin is great for slash resistance and accuracy. Dark Bahamu is good for more damage and magic resistance. For her trust stone, on the left, either vital or luck. Be sure to give her curse resistance. On the right, either agility or accuracy. The abilities here are for the Star Gleam Sword. The abilities are very straightforward. Next sample teams. The first team is the Light and Dark team with Cloud and Cypher. With a couple of sub VC changes, a Devout or another Great Sword unit instead of Cypher would also work. In a setup like this, Lilith's slash resistance is above 70. With her slash attack and penetration in peril, she can take slash attack really well. If you want more traditional AoE resistance, just put Dark Bahamu in the main slot and put her new VC in the sub slot. Magic Wide Guard will become more important once Crimson Wizard and Saddle Lee arrive in the game. This team can handle them quite well. Lilith's unit and AoE resistance might be lower, but she has 15 physical Wide Guard and 31 Magic Wide Guard if she has the Army Plate equipped. She is quite tanky against AoE attacks, and she has her Magic Barrier to defend against follow up attacks. With Reraise active, her defense penetration can reach 50 and has 60 slash penetration at all times. Next is the Mono Light setup. This is the first true next gen Mono Element team with Cloud and Fina. This team focuses on magic resistance, a total of 30 just from vision cards. Her magic resistance is over 60, plus she has 16 magic wide guard from her new VC. With Fina on the team, I like Lilith as Paladin to attract attacks. Fina's card has 20% max HP even in the sub slot, Lilith will have a lot of HP to burn. If you want to give her more slash resistance, you can put the Solidus VC in a sub slot. Next are a couple more teams. The one on top is a Evade Warrior team with Cypher and Soniel. Lilith's luck is the same as Cypher, she can be semi-evasive. The team at the bottom is a Warrior and Knight team with Cypher and Ashen and King. Both of these teams can catch people off guard, but not as viable as the previous ones. Before final thoughts, let's look at the VCs for the Warrior group. Since Cypher, there are two new cards. Lilith's VC for Magic Wide Guard, and Angela's VC as another unit resistance card. The group is ready for sure. Now my final thoughts of you are Lilith. Lilith is a fitting 70 cost unit. She is a strong debuffer that can stand up to slash and magic attacks. In my limited experience against her, she did well. Can take a few hits but does not hit back hard. As I just said, a fitting 70 cost unit, very solid for that price tag. However, I don't think she is necessary for any players to pull for her right away. As it stands, Guild Battle is heading into the reserve system. Even though it is still in the works after three tries, I believe the developer is continuing in that direction. The rule for the next limited Guild Battle on JP is total cost of 580. The needs for 70 cost units are going away. For CM, the cost limit is sometimes 240, you wouldn't want to put a 70 cost unit under that rule. Unless the rule is 270, then you would consider her. I don't recommend pulling for her right now even with the 18k guarantee. You will get her eventually. I look forward to the unit that has Saber Knight as a sub in the future. I think the VC has more value than unit, 16 magic wide guard is good, and have some future use. But still it is not a musket right now, just wait. I am sorry everyone, the files of the couple good matches I have are corrupted. Rather than showing a couple of bad matches, I am skipping sample matches this time. I promise, I will include her if I run into her in the near future. The match I am showing is Mono Fire against Mixed Light and Dark with Angela, Cypher, and Lilith. Please excuse my less than optimal BC setup, I was going for some arena bonus. Lilith's first action, Group Buff, grants the group crit of A20 and slash resistance 25 for 4 turns. For her self-defense 20, 
Spirit 20, and absorb 50% of damage dealt. All for 4 turns. Second turn, self buff. Grants herself re raise. While re raise is active, she gets the following effects Defense Penetration 30, Lower AP Consumption 30, and Apply Lower Targets Debuff Weakening 30 before damage to all her attacks. Other than those, she also gets the following on hit effects for 4 turns Lower Targets Slash Attack 30, and Seals Targets Re Raise Remove. Both for 3 turns. Now she moves in for her LB. Select two targets, and lower their defense by 38 for three turns. Then deals extra large damage, and lower targets spirit 30, and slash penetration 40 both for three turns. This is another of her select two ability. Before damage increase self unit resistance penetration 30 for 3 turns. Then deals large damage and lower targets slash attack 40 for 3 turns. With her magic barrier, she is taking my attacks quite well. But once the barrier is gone, it's over for her. That's all I have for today. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.